G'day. Do you know this man? Oh, and what's this about pancakes? I'll get onto that a little later on. This is Patricio Award, Pato for short. And I've seen no other driver who embraces the fan side of the sport as warmly as this man does. I sat down for breakfast with Pato last year at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, where he drove Lando Norris's McLaren in FP1. I started off by asking him which F1 drivers he knew well. Kevin was my teammate for a race in IndyCar. I know Mick, Lando, Daniel, Max, Checo, uh, Lance. Uh, I raced many years with Lance in, in go-karts. And what F1 driver's phone numbers does he have in his phone? Lando, Daniel, Checo, Max. I think just, I think those four. Oh, here's some great news. I've done a signed print collaboration with Pato. Yes, you can get a hand signed and hand numbered print this shot taken at post-season testing last year in Abu Dhabi by heading to kimelman.com and ordering yours now. I asked Pato, what question does he get asked most often? Oh, I'll tell you the question that everybody doesn't stop asking me. When F1? When F1? When are you going to be in F1? Are you going to go to F1? And that is not something I can answer. You can plan your objectives maybe for the next season, <laughs> but that's it. Pato's driven in F1 post-season testing and in FP1. I asked him what the major differences between the two experiences were. I'll tell you what was very different is uh, all the traffic callings. So when, when you're in sync or not in sync with somebody and you know someone's on a fly or someone's on a, on a cool down or there's four cars that you're coming up to on a cool down and you're on a flyer, that's probably the, the most different thing that, that, that from what I'm used to which makes it a little bit hard to get into the rhythm of things. And the differences between an F1 and an IndyCar? The, the way that I approached yesterday was a lot more reserved than, than what it usually is. For example, with the IndyCar that, that, that I know very well, I had never driven this 2022 car. So there's certain things that you have to feel out before you can really start moving on from that and, and, and start kind of pushing the limits. The worst thing that, that could have happened was you bin it in the wall. Lando's not too happy and, uh, and the team's got a repair job to do before FP2. And driving an F1 car in FP1, was that a highlight of his career? I've had a, a, a successful career so far and I've had really special wins that mean a lot to me. I aspire to have a full race seat, right? And, uh, and I think that's a, this is a milestone to that. The best days in my racing career. This has got to be one of them, but it's definitely not the best. Pato is enormously popular on social media, and I wanted to know what his strangest social media moment was. So in Mexico, did you, I went to the stadium section yeah. with everybody, and someone texted or DM my sister, and she's like, oh, I got close to Pato. He does smell like pancakes. <laughs> like, what? And how does a driver like Pato handle the unfiltered and even offensive opinions he sees online. You learn that not everybody's gonna love you. Not everybody's gonna hate you. The bigger you are and the more well-known you are, the more it's gonna happen. If social media allows people to kind of exploit their feelings and, and really give their opinion. But sometimes the opinions are hurtful. Like whether, it doesn't matter how strong you are mentally or you'll see something and it's kind of like, well, thanks. And you kind of just have to let it breeze over, over you because there's really no point in dedicating time to those. And in the paddock, how does he handle fans that he can't give enough time to? You know, we're in entertainment, right? We're there to entertain. We're there to, for people to have an experience. And we're, we're there to race. The, the schedules are so compressed that we've got somewhere to be. And I've had instances where I've had somewhere to be. So you don't really have a choice but to continue walking or continue going to where you need to go, and people will say, oh, he didn't stop when I, you know, when I wanted an autograph or I wanted a picture. Whenever I have the chance, I always try and do it. This pic was one of my most popular pics on Insta last year. I asked Pato why he thought it struck such a chord. It connects you to the human side a little bit more. You know, when you're in a professional environment, a lot of the times you're dictated on what to say. This is how we're gonna say this and this is how you need to act. I mean, everybody will have a bad day. Everybody will say a bad word here and there and everybody's gonna have fun. It's harder to see in a professional environment because you, you've got work to do, right? So I feel like they enjoy that like human part of, of the athlete or of 
the person that they like watching on TV. And was Lance as serious then as he is now? No, I think he was quite a bit more, a bit more loose back, back, back in the day, back in the karting days. Honestly, a lot of the guys are super nice and always uh, good, friendly faces to see whenever I come and, and cheer on at the F1 races. Pato O'Ward, I'd love to see him in F1. He'd be huge on Drive to Survive, such is his personality and demeanor, and he'd instantly gel with the fans. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't done so, and remember you can become a member. For all my digital images, head to ProStarPix.com for merchandise, wall art, F1 driver books, and signed prints by drivers and team principals. Go to KimElman.com, and for my best images live from the track, and all during the week, go to Instagram and search my name, Kim Elman. Thanks for watching and stay passionate.